Welcome back to the wizard shop. Have you guys ever done a clutch on an old air-cooled beetle? Here we have today a 1972 Super Beetle. That car wizard? Yeah. Um, that's a toy. Oh, wrong beetle, sorry. Let's get to the real beetle. So no, we're not gonna do the clutch on a toy beetle. But we are going to show you guys what's involved on a clutch on a real beetle. Let me set this aside. This is not going to do us any good. So this is a 1972 Super Beetle with the dual port 1600 air-cooled engine. It's not in here for a rebuild or restoration. The customer just wants the clutch done and some associated seals and things taken care of while it's apart. We used to own one of these, Mrs. Wizard, you remember? I know, it was cute, it was a little orange thing. Yeah, it was actually painted with Lamborghini orange paint, the pearl orange, kind of like uh, Hoovy's Murcielago, that exact same paint. It wasn't painted like similar, it was the actual Lamborghini paint. Somebody paid to have it painted that way, and it was really cool, it was nice. I fixed it up and did a lot of work to it, a lot of the stuff we're doing here today, and I learned so much. Again, this is another one of those cars that you don't just take to any old mechanic because there's so many different things to know about on these Beetles that you just don't think about with a common car. Like, there's no radiator. There's no coolant. It's all air-cooled. Let's go take a look. It is rear-engined, air-cooled, and there's such a blast to drive. They're really small. I mean, if you're, you're bigger than me, it probably is not going to be fun to fit in, but... In order to do a clutch, it's quite involved. It's actually not hard, it's not time consuming, but it's more than you would think to get the, the clutch apart on this. Let's open the bonnet and take a look. All right. Uh, the, Wizard, you're kind of missing something there. Oh, the engine? Yeah. Oh, that has to come out to do the clutch. It's behind you, actually. It's an engine out job? Yes. The way these are designed, and as soon as we raise this up, I'll show you that you can't pull the transmission, you have to pull the engine out to get to the clutch. And here we have the 1600cc dual port opposed four-cylinder engine, air-cooled. You can see a fan right here, it's kind of like a blower on your blower motor in your car. It's driven by a belt off the generator. And right inside there you can see this box shape that's actually in the steel. This whole apparatus here is the oil cooler. Air is blown through it and out to the bottom. So there's an oil cooler and there's also air blown over the fins that are underneath these shields. So it's basically like a motorcycle, an old air-cooled motorcycle. So we've got the uh, flywheel off. We're going to go ahead and do the rear main seal. It was seeping a little bit. There may be a tiny bit of seepage on the case gasket, but we're not going to pull the whole motor apart. That's not what the customer wants to do. But these are heater boxes. You see these little valves. This is actually your heater. When you want to turn on the heat in your car on a cold day, it will blow air through these boxes around the exhaust. Now the exhaust doesn't make it into the cabin, but the heat does. It's a very interesting setup. You pull the lever in between the seats and it will open these up and let heat into your car. So it had dual climate control? Uh, yes, it kind of did, I guess. Let's go ahead and move around to the front of the engine. When you open the hood on one of these, to the uninitiated, it's very bewildering. It's actually very confusing because all you see is this area right here. You don't see the cylinders, you don't see really much of anything but a, a distributor, a carburetor, a generator all bunched in in one little small area and a fuel pump. I've actually opened the rear hatch on some of these when I work on them, or actually the one I owned, and people will be like, what in the world? Where's the engine? Well, that is the engine. It doesn't jive or make sense with what you expect to see with an engine. We're not doing a whole lot of work to the engine. The engine's fine. This has a few leaks. We will put a fuel pump gasket on it. It's leaking a little bit. But the main reason it's here is the clutch. Let's take a look on the table. And here we have the tiny baby clutch disc. Look how little it is, Mrs. Wizard. Oh, he's just so cute. I wonder if it's original. It's worn down to the rivets and it has a VW stamp on it. 
I, I'm not too sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's the original 1972 clutch disc. Here's our pressure plate, which has a deep groove worn in it from those rivets I just showed you. So that pressure plate is really no good anymore. And here is what holds the flywheel on. If you take a look over here at the flywheel, it has four pegs that fit on the crankshaft and then this one large bolt that fits in the center. Very tight. Very, very tight. And this, even though it looks like a bolt, is actually called a Glen nut. It's kind of an odd name. But inside of it, there is a bearing. It's a pilot bearing for the input shaft on the transmission. And there's also a small seal there. This one was leaking through the gland nut oil through that seal and spraying, spraying it on the clutch. I've got a brand new gland nut coming, 19 bucks for new bearing, new seal, and a new gland nut. I can't replace the bearing for cheaper than that. It just makes sense to replace it. Here we have a brand new pressure plate the customer supplied. No grooves in that one. That one's brand new, ready to go. Here's our new clutch disc, ready to go in. We're waiting on some seals and things to come in. But we did take on the transmission. The input shaft seal has been removed. Here's our rear main seal from the engine. And these are the CV shaft or axle seals on the transmission. These were all leaking pretty bad. And here's our clutch release bearing. It's probably still good, but while we're here, we've got a brand new one right there. Nice and new. And here we have the starter. You have to get the starter out to pull the engine out. There's a bolt that runs through it. Some heat shields and things that were on there. These are all things you do while this is apart. You do the rear main seal, the axle shaft seals, input seal and the transmission. It makes sense to just go ahead and take care of all those things. Let's go ahead and lift the little beetle up and look underneath. So millions of these cars are made, literally millions. And there were at one time, they were all over the place, but you don't see them as much anymore because they're all rusted out or crushed or, but there's still some on the road and parts are really easy to get on these as well. This one being a Super Beetle, because it has McPherson struts up front, actual true coil spring with struts and drum brakes, of course. Nothing's loose there. The Beetles before these would have torsion type suspension. It had a torsion bars that go across and had little arms. IFS is what it was called. But this is uh, an upgrade to that system. It's called McPherson Strut Super Beetle. As you can see, there's no radiator here. There's really nothing in there. There's a spare tire above that. On this car, the frame is not on the perimeter of the vehicle. It is right down the center. This is the frame all the way back. These are just floor pans. And there is some rust on this car. It's a project car. They're going to take care of a lot of the stuff themselves. But they didn't want to mess with the clutch. And we're happy to do that for them. Here's our little tiny steering gear box. Obviously, it's not power steering. It's not needed on this car. Here's our brake master cylinder. It does not have power brakes. It just has regular brakes. Manual brakes, as they're called. We'll go ahead and move our way back. And these floor pans are, eh, they're okay. They're decent, but they're, so many of these have this area rusted out right here. This is the heater channel. So we talked about the heater blowing air through the exhaust will actually blow through this channel all the way up and into the cabin. When these are rusted out like this, you lose your hot air and it blows out. Very common on these. And as we move back to the back, here's our transaxle, our transmission. This has swing arms on it. This is like a blade with torsion bars inside these tubes. That's our springs. And we'll go ahead and move back to the transmission. 
There's no engine mounts on these cars. The engine hovers out in the air and held on by the transmission. Here's the mounts right here and here. We'll probably be replacing those. And it mounts to these frame horns right here. That holds the engine and transmission up all by itself. There's no mounts out here. You can see we have the input shaft removed, the seal removed. We've got a new one ordered. Here's our little heater box connections that go through the heater channels I just talked about. That actually heats the car. If you look over here, you can see we have the CV shafts removed, and then we have the axle flanges removed, and the seals removed. We're going to put new seals there because it was leaking pretty bad. So we'll get all these leaks taken care of for the customer, and get his clutch taken care of, and have all the really hard stuff out of the way for him. And this is not standard equipment. This is a screwdriver blocking the fuel line so it doesn't siphon and drip all over the floor. These are not hard to work on. They're actually very enjoyable to work on. I really like working on them. Some mechanic shops, modern shops today, will not work on these. They'll just say, uh, no, no thanks, bro. I don't want that car in my shop. I'm happy to have them in my shop. Just like in the previous video, we talked about you always want a mechanic that's an enthusiast, that loves the cars, to work on your cars like these. I love the little Beetles. I'm happy to work on them. They're really cool. So we're very happy to get to do this job for this customer and get him taken care of. Let's open the hood. Well, the trunk, the frunk. That's what it's called, the frunk. Let's open it up. And there's nothing. Well, there's a spare tire down there. So many times these cardboard pieces are missing. And here's our air intake for the defroster. I'll real pry it a little bit and let you guys see. There's the fuse box and the relays and everything that's in there behind the instrument cluster. And yes, that speaker right there, that is the instrument cluster. It's literally right there. So it's kind of interesting. Our gas tank is right here. There's our filler neck. And this is our washer reservoir. So on this one you'd fill it up with air, like your, an air chuck. And it says here 42 pounds per square inch maximum. Some of the older beetles actually use the pressure off your spare tire to push the fluid through to do your windshield washer. You don't want to do that too much or you'll flatten your spare tire. But this one you fill up yourself. When you're done, you put the cap back on. And that's how that works. So really there's not a whole lot under here, but definitely your wiring. So as you can see, it's got 87,000 miles on it. I believe that to be 87,000 original miles based on the fact that I see the original VW clutch in it. And to the left of the speedometer, you can see the speaker we just talked about. Literally behind that panel is your trunk. Here's our blower motor. There's the radio, a sapphire. Looks like sapphire 15. Hazards. This is to open your front trunk, the frunk. There's the owner's manual. A little glove box. This is to do your fuel filler right here. This is actually how you pull this and put gas in your car. Not a lot of room in here, is there, Mrs. Wizard? No, but there's a lot of headroom. Yeah, I really like that about these. Lots of headroom. Headliner seems to be in decent shape. That's really good. The back seat's not too nice. We have it out right now because we unhooked the battery while we're working on it. Here we can see some more of our heater outputs in the floor right here. This is actually where heat would come out. You can see the channel, the duct work that goes through there. So there's actually two areas where heat is blown through. It's through these pipes. And you can see right here where I'm touching is oh, kind of like a, a Y. It Y's off to the heater channels along the sides that we just saw that were rusted out. But depending on if you want heat on the floor or defrost, which runs up through the heater channels, it's all done right through here. Right down there you can see the heater controls and the e-brake, the handbrake. There's two levers that will do 
defrost floor and also open the heat to let it come in or close the heat off. When these things work, the heaters work, they do okay, but most of the time they don't work very well and people freeze or the, they get cold and they say, this thing is a piece of junk, it doesn't put out much heat. Well, the truth is, is that putting out tons of heat is just not making it to you. The heater boxes could be clogged up, it could be disconnected, the, the hoses, the heater hoses could be broken, who knows. I've had this little toy beetle since the beetle I had way back when. It's funny that this car comes in and it's almost identical to it. Give me that. They're not well, here I was for just, you to watch okay. with this. Well, Although it is really cute, you can actually flip the seats forward and all. And climb on in, guys. It is a cool little toy. It is. I'll it put is. it back in the office where it was. Yeah, yeah. But well, you could have finished this video. Okay, well, let's do that. So now that Mrs. Wizard has taken my little toy beetle from me, I guess it's time to close the video out. It's been a while since I've worked on one of these, but it's really fun to work on. I really enjoy working on them. I'm glad this customer brought it. We actually have another customer who has the Lotus Evora you guys have seen in the shop. He actually has one of these as well. He's going to be bringing it. I said, good. I really enjoy working on them. I wouldn't mind working on beetles all day long. I really like them. So if you're curious what kind of tools we use to work on these beetles, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. All the tools I use in the shop that help save me from so much headaches are listed there for sale. We get a small cut and I appreciate it. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button already, I really recommend you do that now. There's some really cool projects coming. Thanks for watching. Welcome back to the... It's moving. <laughs> I can't see it. Okay, it's good. <laughs>